Meet David, the guy who breaks the most jaws in anime history. David was born without magic, had no girlfriend, and spent all day training. He was practically a virgin. This average dude lives in a world crawling with cocky wizards blasting spells every which way. But David knocks them all out cold with one punch to the face. Bye bye wizard, see you never. This anime opens up in a place called the Magic Kingdom, which looks like some medieval dump. Apparently magic is normal here. Even little brats can do spells. Wizards are ranked by how freakishly strong they are, so the top ones are famous. Oh, and talking dragons are flying around too. First we meet David, who's ridiculously jacked and can lift massive weights with his hands like they're made of paper. After an intense workout session, he scarfs down a sweet cream bun. Then we see some bald old dude with a mustache who can use magic. He says he's 75 and has done a lot of good and bad things. So he's seen it all and nothing stresses him out now. As he says this, he whips up some tea using his magical bald man powers. Suddenly his grandson David bursts in and smashes the door down with his K-pop star strength. Turns out David is different and can't use magic, but Grandpa wants to keep it secret so David can live his pop star dreams. After this, Gramps gets up and heads out to collect his fat magic pension check. When he leaves, he tells the boy not to go into town because it's dangerous. Better to just chill at home. David's like, yeah, sure Gramps. But as soon as the bald mustached man calls him a good kid, David whips out a flyer from his pocket. It's for a shop selling cheap buns. Since he loves that stuff, he ignores Gramps and bolts like a maniac into town to get those sweet treats. As he runs around downtown, he sees everyone using magic to do everything. Make candy, shine shoes, serve booze. Oh yeah, David is just so strong and powerful, he can do anything with his bare hands. He practically has the strength of 10 men. David swaggered into the bakery and asked for a cream bun from the vendor. When he took out his money, the coins were mangled and bent out of shape. Of course, this happened again. David is simply too strong. Everything he touches gets utterly demolished by his insane power. The vendor was shocked to see the disfigured coins. David straightened them out, because bending metal is child's play for someone as buff and muscular as him. The vendor nearly fainted at this casual display of strength, but he managed to hand over the cream bun to the almighty David with his trembling hands. As David turned to leave, his hood blew back dramatically, revealing his unmarked skin. The crowd gasped, because everyone knows the unmarked are illegal, non-magic freaks who deserve no rights. In other news, a star student has been named Student of the Year thanks to his incredible mystical skills. We should all aspire to be like this talented boy who will surely have many exciting adventures fighting evil with his cool powers, not like that boring policeman forced to deal with mundane criminals each day. The cop just got an alert. An unmarked boy is on the loose stealing buns. Meanwhile, David is just casually walking along, enjoying his delicious cream bun, as if anyone would notice an unmarked kid just trying to buy a tasty snack. Oops, David bumped into an officer smearing cream all over his uniform. This enrages the drunk officer who is looking for any excuse to pick a fight, so he spitefully knocks one of David's buns to the ground. David is ticked off and casually rips all the officer's clothes off like it's nothing. Officer Coleman shows up and confirms David is the unmarked kid reported. Just as Coleman is about to do his job, David's bald grandpa swoops in and whisks him away, but not before apologizing for the trouble. Coleman sees this as an opportunity to get promoted and sends a bird to keep watch on them. Back home, Grandpa Baldy scolds David, who says sorry. David then brings his grandpa some creamy buns as an apology before going off to train. Suddenly, Coleman and his men show up to do official police business. David continues his daily training routine, focused on getting jacked. When he returns home to eat a bun, he overhears Grandpa's conversation with the officer. Coleman explains harboring an unmarked thug is a big no-no and starts wailing on the old man, demanding he cough up David. We learn Baldy wasn't always bald. He had a sweet hairdo as a youngster, but who cares? What matters is he was a weakling at magic as a kid and got bullied hard. This made him so depressed he almost ended it all, but just as he was about to do the deed, he heard a baby cry. It was David. David had no mystical mark and Grandpa realized he was abandoned. Feeling a bond with the little guy, he decided to care for David and promised to keep him safe. Back to the present, Grandpa tells David to bounce, but Coleman quickly shuts him up with a nasty blow. Having heard enough, David decides to jump in and give the cops a serious butt kicking. He then prepares to throw down with Coleman, who desperately hurls his most powerful spells, the kind that once freaked out a dragon. Coleman launches his juiced up magic at David, but the dude karate chops them in half, leaving the officer dumbfounded. 
We see David easily dodge and smash all of Coleman's attacks. Finally, David chucks a wand and blows Coleman's magic circle to a million pieces, making the cop look like an idiot. David warns he'll wipe out the police if they mess with his family again. Grandpa Baldy admits he trained David to kick Major Butt, but the results exceeded his expectations. Coleman then laughs and says David is interesting. He proposes a deal. If David enrolls in magic school, gets top grades, earns a divine title, the magic cops will get off his back. But the old geezer doesn't want his grandson chilling with the mole who just tried to murder them seconds ago. However, Coleman makes a good point. No matter how buff David is, he can't protect his grandpa 24-7 and would have to live on the run. That's why Coleman offers this sweet deal. If David crushes it at magic school, he could live in peace with his fam. Baldy reluctantly agrees. We then see David roll up to his new gloomy thunderstorm ravaged school, but he remains pumped and claims he'll reach his goal using just his fists. The school is known as a prestigious old institution that trains the top dogs of the magical kingdom. In another scene, students gather at a field for the wicked hard entrance exam, which only magic prodigies can pass. Yet here's David without any powers. As students prep, we meet Miles, a school admin, he peeps the applicants and is stoked some come from highfalutin families, good for the school's image. Suddenly, a metallic sound annoys Miles. He searches for the perp and is mind blown to see David casually lifting heavy junk. He can't understand why someone would physically train at a magic school. As the exam is about to begin, Miles chills out and dismisses David as some meathead jock who ain't taking this seriously. He's further surprised to see David reading a book while sitting on air, propped up by his massive muscles. Miles is annoyed that David isn't reading a magic book and notices Coleman is peeping too. During the test, David's grandpa is skeptical about how he'll pass without busting out magic. But the cop is confident David's fake scar will fool everyone. He just has to crush the trials. Miles' voice then blasts out, welcoming the new meat. David scarfs his cream buns and wonders what kind of trial this will be. Miles pops up before the youths using flashy fire magic, impressing all but David. Noticing this, Miles mentions he'll try to fail that punk. Miles announces he will oversee the exam himself, intimidating and thrilling students since he's the seventh best up-and-coming mage and has mastered advanced magic while young. Miles eats up the praise, craving more adoration. He then declares the first test will begin, whipping up seats and study junk. The students are amped, while David stays typically bored. This makes Miles vow to take down David, though he decides to ignore him since he likely won't pass anyway. The students sit and are told they have 30 minutes. When they flip the page, they're shocked to see the question's busting moves. Miles hex the papers. David's grandpa, in a crummy disguise, says there's no way David can pass this biz. As the letters dance around, David tries stopping them, then stabs his pen into the paper. Amazingly, the words rearrange themselves, and he brings his finished exam to a stunned Miles. David keeps leveraging his physical skills to beast the trials, leaving everyone mind blown. Miles watches pissed off, pondering how to ditch this fool. He swiftly announces the next trial, escaping a maze in 30 minutes. David feels confident, but a girl named Jessica approaches, wanting to join him, which he accepts. In the maze, Jessica falls for most traps while David drops his guard. She ensnares him in a spell, revealing she aims to stop David from reaching the end. David is surprised at first, but easily breaks the spell, intent on finishing this thing. Jessica then encounters an Egyptian monster demanding she solve a riddle. When her attacks fail, it takes her wand. But David appears, cowing it with one punch. Jessica is confused about why he helped her. David explains he understood their motivations were similar, so he chose to lend a hand to his homie. We see students who finish the trial awaiting the final countdown. Miles doubts David will make it in time when loud banging approaches. Everyone is shocked to see David smash through the walls to create a shortcut. The examiner is even more surprised since the walls repel even magic. The headmaster watches the commotion from his office, intrigued by these events. Students question how the duo completed the maze and conclude they should be disqualified. David tries to stand firm against the criticism but feels bummed. Jessica speaks up, revealing Miles promised her entry if she stopped David from finishing the maze. Though she knew it was shady, Jessica accepted because her fam is broke and she wanted to bounce from that trash heap. Miles admits his scheming ways, stating he's the teacher and asking if any fools dare challenge his word. David lunges at him, quickly snapping his wand like a toothpick, shocking everyone. He tells Miles to chill before he gets a serious spanking he'll never forget. David's grandpa and Coleman chime in that he's an aggressive bulldog as usual. 
Before Miles can react, the headmaster halts him with a shout, announcing the final interviews will begin, and for Miles to see him later for a good paddling. The headmaster then brings David into a dark room with officials, who ask him questions but remain stone-faced and unimpressed. However, the headmaster is intrigued learning David chose to save Jessica, despite losing time to finish the maze designed for lab rats. David simply says he would have regretted ditching his homegirl. The headmaster wants to school David that brute strength isn't everything and asks if he could stare down someone more powerful with the same twisted logic. He then unleashes a sinister aura and casts a terrifying soul-sucking spell that scares even the teachers pissless. He explains it's an ancient forbidden enchantment that hijacks loved one's souls straight to Hades. David's grandpa faints like a damsel. David tries stopping the sword with his bare hands but gets messed up badly. Even the headmaster and teachers are surprised by his bravery or stupidity. David declares the spell can't last forever, making it an endurance competition he can outlast. The headmaster explains magic can be used for good or evil, so it's important for powerful mages to protect the weak and regulate the crooked, their function. Sensing David has an ability akin to his own, he dispels the soul-reaping sorcery. David's grandpa's soul returns to his frail body. The headmaster apologizes, saying he was only testing David's grit. David accepts the apology and responds he'd sock the headmaster into next week if he had to face him for real. This shocks the teachers who see it as disrespect, but the headmaster laughs and offers David a spot at the academy, calling him already a legend who don't take crap from nobody. In David's first class, they teach a basic unlocking spell. The teacher demonstrates, but David easily opens it with his bare hands like a savage. This ticks off the teacher since he used force, not magic. David reminds her he's there to learn magic, not parlor tricks, and impresses the teacher with his raw skills, explaining he's not so good with magic itself yet. We find Finn who sees David as a rebel hellraiser after the events and decides to keep his distance from the psycho guy. Meanwhile, a group of old geezers watch the class with unfriendly faces and sinister smiles like fairy tale villains. Then Finn looks for his room, hoping not to have to share it with David the Destroyer. But when he arrives, he is surprised to see there is no door because David has smashed it to bits like the Hulk. They introduce themselves and the boy notices that David is a normal person, just super jacked. But when David starts showing off his muscles like a meathead, Finn thinks I was wrong, this guy is really nuts. After breaking the ice, David asks his new roommate how he can become the best nerd in the school. Finn explains that you have to collect gold coins that are earned by excelling in tests, extracurriculars, and school life. But no matter how many achievements a student has, if their grades drop, they get suspended each semester. After hearing this, David goes to study full-time like a machine. Then there is a practice with a flying broom. Since David has no magic or broom, he asks for his roommates and Finn lends it to him. David takes the broom test and fails miserably because he has no magic, then a classmate appears and challenges him to a race, and David wins using his freakish physical skills. The teacher is surprised and says David broke a world record by cheating. Finn tells us David threw the broom with all his strength like a javelin and then got on it. What a beast. Then a douchebag named Lloyd appears to become friends with David, but we quickly discover he's a snake. We see how Lloyd beats up the boy who challenged David because he's jealous he couldn't beat the muscle head. Finn explains to David that Lloyd is the son of a bigwig in magical politics, so everyone in school is scared of him. The next day, David starts being bullied, but doesn't even realize it because David lives in his own world. In the end, we find out they forced Finn to participate, although he decided to rebel. Lloyd beats up Finn, and then David arrives. When David sees all the damage caused by Lloyd, he decides to teach him a lesson and uses his strength to beat him to a pulp. Shortly after, the vice principal, a friend of Lloyd's father, appears to suspend David. As you can imagine, David doesn't just stand by and also gives the vice principal a whooping. Then David realizes he messed up and regrets it for a minute. Later, when he meets with the principal, he tells David the bigwigs in the government asked him to expel the maniac. However, the principal still believes strong wizards should fight for the weak, so he doesn't expel him but puts a condition on him. David must strive to be the best student in the school no more fighting. The old fogey director explains to David that to become the divine visionary, he's got to crush it at school and rack up a crap ton of gold, silver, and bronze coins. At first, David gets lost with all this nerd info, but the director breaks it down for him in simple caveman words, and then he gets the gist. The next day, some dweeb named Tom asks David to join the Flying Broomstick Club. David, remembering his goal to dominate, agrees right away. 
But then we see him in the middle of a match without a clue what to do, since he obviously can't fly the magic broomstick. David stands there like a statue while his team gets obliterated. Then Tom swoops down to hype him up and explains the rules real quick. Basically, you chuck the ball in the hoops. He takes off again and David stays grounded, completely clueless about controlling his broom. Suddenly, Tom gets wrecked mid-game and his team starts getting mercilessly crushed. When David sees things going south, he decides to take matters into his own hands. Somehow he manages to stay airborne, though really he's just flailing his legs like crazy. With his beastly physical abilities, he starts scoring goals left and right, and in the end, his team wins thanks to him. Everyone is mind blown, especially Lemon who melts for David. It turns out some mysterious dude with magical face tattoos reads in the paper that David single-handedly won the match, making him furious enough to want vengeance. The next day, Tom and Lemon wish to spend more time with David to help him study and practice sports. But suddenly, the mystery man shows up, introducing himself as Lance, whom Lemon instantly recognizes as the guy who got the top exam score. This jerk whips out a magic bottle and traps David's friends inside. Then he challenges David to a wizard's duel, threatening to crush them if David doesn't accept. Of course, David doesn't hesitate and agrees to save his buddies. They go elsewhere for their epic brawl, the prize being some silver coins to move up the ranks as best school wizard. Turns out Lance has two magical marks, meaning he's insanely powerful. They start fighting and Lance uses his magic to immobilize David by increasing gravity. But hold up, David's massive muscles allow him to still move and he lands a mega punch. Lance barely dodges by a hair. They keep exchanging blows and suddenly David rips off Lance's necklace. Seeing a photo of a girl inside, David thinks Lance is a creep and asks if he's some pedo. Lance explains no dummy, the girl is his little sister and he's super overprotective of her. Then Lance spills his sob story. He wants to become the top wizard at the academy to find a way to cure his sickly little sis. After, Lance chucks the bottle with David's friends inside. David uses his super speed to save them. David says it's better to end the fight since he doesn't see Lance as a bad dude, since Lance didn't hurl the bottle for real. David says something nostalgic that makes Lance lose his will to keep battling and he agrees to call off the duel. Later, we see David casually sipping tea with his buddy Finn. Suddenly, Finn realizes they had homework and didn't do crap. Just then, Lance shows up to chat with David and we learn Lance did do the homework, of course. Finn says Lance is super studious. No wonder he's top of the class. David and Finn beg him for help with the homework. They go to the school kitchen where they have a contest to calm some mandrakes. Lance performs the spell instantly and explains how to do it. Then David tries to soothe his mandrake, but it just wails louder. Meanwhile, Finn manages the spell after a few tries thanks to Lance's instructions. Finn then turns to see how David's doing and is shocked to see his mandrake has grown huge and is screaming louder than ever. So David decides to do what he knows best and smashes the creature with a massive smack, knocking it out so bad it'll be waking up next week. Elsewhere, we meet a red-haired dude who accidentally bumps into some grumpy thugs looking to brawl. What they didn't know was this ginger was way stronger than expected and ended up clobbering them all. That same night, a group gathers to discuss the future divine visionaries. The next day, David learns he has a joint practical class with another house, so the two houses unite for the session. There, David meets the redhead from before. Then the professor tells them they must defeat some monsters, and if they pass, they'll get silver and bronze medals depending on the beast they beat. Later, David encounters a nasty guy with two magical face marks, meaning he's super strong. But due to his crap attitude, he had to repeat a year, and Lance comments they still haven't expelled him because of his double power marks. After that, David and the redhead venture into the woods to battle the monsters and complete the mission, but they quickly get lost like idiots. Later, David runs into Barrett, the redhead, who gets all excited to see him. Then they witness some creep harassing a girl, and without hesitating, Barrett helps the chick out. She uses some freaky magic to make him fall for her, but turns out Barrett was already crushing hard. She approaches David and tries using her powers on him too, but for some reason it doesn't work on this dude, so she decides to just use Barrett as her bodyguard. The girl manipulates Barrett, telling him some dangerous stalker is after her. As soon as Barrett hears this, he immediately says he'll beat the crap out of that punk. Right then, the guy with the two face tattoos from before, called Sullivan, shows up and admits to being the stalker. Barrett attacks him with his two fireballs, but Sullivan doesn't even flinch and gets ready to counter. Sullivan is willing to do anything. 
Barrett realizes he's scared out of his mind seeing Sullivan's power and two tattoos making him super strong. Barrett starts racking his brain on what to do and comments that David won't be any help since he looks weak. After saying that, Barrett mentions he's got to think of something to protect this chick. Suddenly, Sullivan speaks up and offers to resolve the conflict with a challenge. Sullivan says he'll leave the girl alone if both dudes can withstand five magic blows. Of course, the girl realizes this is nuts since Sullivan is way too strong and they'll all get messed up badly. But Barrett accepts the challenge, seeing it as the only way out to win this beef. Sullivan then comments that David's got to participate too, but Barrett tells him David's got nothing to do with this. Barrett then tells the wizard Sullivan he'll take David's blows too, so he's got to withstand 10 hits total. As you can imagine, Sullivan is surprised by Barrett's reckless attitude. At the same time, Barrett tells his worried buds he got himself into this and he'll do whatever it takes to fix it. We then see Barrett take the first attack, which leaves him in bad shape. Next up, Barrett gets slammed with a crap load of blows and ends up messed up badly, but somehow stays on his feet. Amidst this, Barrett comments that the chick was probably playing him. Sullivan says that in honor of his determination, the last hit will be the strongest. So Barrett takes a crushing attack and is left wrecked, yet still manages to stand up again. Barrett then tells David to get the girl out of there while he can, but just then, it's revealed the girl is allied with Sullivan, which you could have guessed from their resemblance. David jumps in to protect Barrett, and things seem to get even more tense. David faces off against Sullivan and easily dodges all his attacks. Then David lands two punches right in the dude's gut. The juvenile delinquent realizes David ain't an average guy and feels humiliated being hurt like that. David stops and sits on a rock, telling his opponent he wants to see the difference in their levels. Now it's Sullivan's turn to take 10 blows from David. But Sullivan realizes if that happens, he'll probably die, so he quickly tries making a distraction to escape. Right then, one of the two strongest scorpions shows up, and Sullivan thinks it's his chance to bolt. But to his bad luck, David instantly kills the beast and apologizes, saying he's got no time for critters when he's busy. After that, Sullivan knows he's screwed. Meanwhile, the girl quickly tries acting all innocent, claiming Sullivan forced her. When David hears this, he goes up to her, grabs her from behind, and tells her not to worry. She comments that men are so easy to control. But just then, David finishes his sentence, declaring he treats men and women equally. As he says this, he executes a German suplex on the girl. Later that evening, David meets up with his friends to discuss what went down. This way, we find out the protagonist earned two silver coins and one gold, which is solid since he needs to collect a bunch to become the divine visionary and reach his goal. The next day, David gets lost in school and ends up wandering aimlessly. Meanwhile, the vanity leader chews out Sullivan for failing and turns him into a puppet. Right then, David bursts into the room and apologizes for breaking the door, admitting he never knows whether to push or pull. He then asks the vanity leader why he's talking to a doll. Abel, the dude who talks to dolls, immediately asks why David wants to become a divine visionary. David explains he just wants to live in peace with his family. Abel responds that divine visionaries bear God's divinity, and if he becomes one, he'll restore the world to its original state. After saying this, the kid mentions humans are like beasts, and natural law dictates the strong feed on the weak. David takes it that Abel has his own vision of a peaceful world, but his words are seen as an insult. David apologizes, saying he didn't mean to offend. Abel then offers to release David for his gold coin, but David Flatto refuses, in response, Abel attacks David using Sullivan, now a puppet. But David counters by smashing the puppet on the ground, breaking the strings and undoing Abel's magic, returning Sullivan to human form. David comments the puppet doesn't pose a challenge, but David gets captured by bigger, stronger puppets. Surprised by their strength, David watches as one puppet takes his coin and tosses it to Abel. After they release him, David accidentally steps on Sullivan and decides to take him to the infirmary, prioritizing his comrade's health. The evil club kid asks if David is giving up his coin, to which David explains no. He's just prioritizing his buddy. David emphasizes that no matter how strong Abel is, he doesn't plan on losing easily. After David leaves, the doll-talking kid notices a button missing from his puppet, the same button David took. A member of the evil magic sect says she's witnessed something unfavorable and explains how David executed a slick maneuver to recover the gold coin. Abel finds the situation interesting. In another scene, Sullivan wakes up in the infirmary with no memory after becoming a puppet. He finds David working out and wonders why he brought him there. David explains that when a pal's in trouble, 
he can't help but step in. Two members of the evil sect Magic Wolf called Andy and Ollie attack David and Lance to steal David's gold coin. Andy uses his powers to create a puddle under David and make him fall, while Ollie directly attacks Lance with a magic spell. Lance manages to dodge the magic attack, and then recognizes Andy as a member of the Crow family who had escaped. Lance decides not to attack Andy because there are some owls nearby and he doesn't want to hurt them. Andy keeps attacking, but Lance protects the owls by deflecting the projectiles with his powers. Meanwhile, David tells Ollie that he can't swim, but to Ollie's surprise, David shows that he can swim a little. Ollie turns into a monster to attack David, but David easily defeats him with punches. After the fight, another Magic Wolf member called Avi Razor appears, demonstrating incredible speed by instantly moving behind David and Lance. He tries to take away the defeated sect members, impressing Lance and David with his superhuman speed. Lance decides they must find the secret dorm of Magic Wolf to steal their gold coins. While Lance talks about his plans, David is distracted making cream buns. Lemon gives David a good luck charm that she made herself. That night, David and Lance go look for gold coins accompanied by Barrett and Finn. They follow a fake Lemon who turns out to be a puppet and arrive at a hidden magic door ready to enter the Magic Wolf's lair. David uses a knight's armor and his sword to open the hidden magic door. Upon crossing the door, they arrive at a combat area where Sean Getsuku of Magic Wolf appears. Sean explains they must bet coins and challenge him to a duel to advance. Barrett offers himself as a challenger since he doesn't like pretty boys like Sean. During the fight, Sean easily blocks Barrett's magic attack. Sean is confident in his abilities, but Barry places explosive marks around him and makes Sean activate the bombs with his thorn whip, defeating him. After winning, the group falls through a hole and gets separated. Lance finds himself in front of Maddie, the third fang of Magic Wolf. Maddie warns Lance that he won't forgive him if he turns out to be a wimp. On the other hand, Barrett and Finn end up with the fourth and fifth fang of Magic Wolf. Although Finn believes they have already lost, Barrett tells him not to give up before trying. David walks into a room and finds Avi, the second in command. Avi admits he was impressed by David's speed earlier, but realizes David can't use magic. To David's surprise, Avi is in the same boat. Meanwhile, Lance is in a fight with a formidable opponent who summons a mud demon. Lance is then informed there are different levels of magic. Basic magic, personal magic, and advanced conditional magic. However, the technique this opponent is using differs from the magic used by single liners. It's a higher level magic that only certain double liners can use. Lance dodges it and explains that his friends have reminded him of something important. Only he can treat them as inferior. That's when Lance uses an upgraded version of his spell, which can only be summoned by using the power of the two marks. In this way, he creates pillars around the mud demon, and the pillars exert a strong gravitational pull, attracting the demon towards them in all directions. Amidst this, Lance adds another pillar above the demon, crushing it and turning it into mud. Seeing this, the boy can't believe his most powerful magic has been defeated, and that he himself has been beaten by Lance. David faces off against Avi, but the latter is too fast for him and manages to make several cuts using one of his techniques. After this, he tells David he doesn't stand a chance, but David isn't worried about that. That's when Avi starts reminiscing and mentions that while their situations are similar, David was probably blessed with people who gave him affection. After saying that, Avi uses his acceleration technique and attacks from different directions, cutting David with each blow and finally stabbing him in the stomach. However, Avi realizes David isn't letting go of his sword and is tightening his abdominal muscles to hold it. That's when David grabs Avi, headbutts him breaking his mask, and at that moment David notices Avi's red eye. Avi realizes David doesn't understand the meaning of his red eye and explains it's called the demon's eye. This ability temporarily disables the magic of those who fall under its gaze, and since magic is everything in this world, Avi is despised. Following this, we see David feels bad because Avi can't use his eye on him. But Avi says it's fine and explains he's been feared and scorned his whole life, even by his own parents. Avi uses one of his techniques to attack David, creating a shield that surrounds him and adding a red arrow pointing down at David. After this, the boy attacks David, who realizes he is moving quite slowly. Avi explains that inside the field, his opponent's speed decreases while he becomes faster. Seconds later, we see how the guy attacks David with his skills, and after several blows he considers lethal, ends up declaring it's all over. However, despite David's slowness, he punches the ground, splitting it in two and consequently managing to restrict Avi's movement. 
Then David jumps over his opponent, breaks his sword, and steps on Abby's leg, preventing him from moving and stating he's caught him a second time. After this, David uses one of his superhuman muscular techniques and ends up hitting Avi, sending him flying out of the force field. This breaks the barrier, allowing Avi to move normally again. Next, we see David start to beat up Avi, who tries to defend himself but is no match for his rival's speed. In the end, David defeats Avi, who wonders what would have become of him if he had been born into a normal family, since he's had a hard life, even with his family despising him. David listens to Avi and thinks maybe Avi is right since David was loved by his grandfather and can't put himself in Avi's shoes. But what he can do is keep him company. So in this way, David proposes to Avi that they be friends, but Avi affirms it's impossible while he has the demon eye. However, Avi decides to warn Max not to move forward since he won't be able to defeat Abel. David thanks him for the warning but says he needs to beat that guy to achieve his goal. After this, David assures him that he doesn't care about his demonic eye and has no problem being his buddy no matter what others say. Before leaving, David tells the boy that the next time they see each other, they should eat cream buns together. The boys face off against this gang of fearsome villains and manage to gain the upper hand. After an epic sequence of flying kicks, powerful magic spells going back and forth, the heroes finally come out victorious in an all-out brawl. But just when they think they've won, the mysterious boy from the beginning, the star student of the academy, appears out of the shadows. He faces off against David in a one-on-one -on -one duel and is like, super impressed by David's incredible power. Because even though David doesn't have magic, with his monstrous strength he manages to knock him out for nap time with one punch. Turns out this powerful rival isn't actually evil after all, and has good motivations just like David. He warns David that Abel, the main villain, is extremely strong and that David won't be able to defeat him on his own. But David responds with determination that he wants to see this adventure through to the end, because his greatest desire is to live a peaceful life with his family. And if to achieve that he has to win all these epic battles and become the strongest warrior, then so be it. He is willing to do anything to protect his loved ones. The Divine Visionary warns David that he'll face problems fighting Abel without magic. Abel has most of the gold coins in the academy, and tells David that if he beats Abel, he'll be close to achieving his goal. Along the way, David arrives at a huge door and destroys it in a fit of rage over what they did to him. Abel shows up and mocks his tendency to destroy doors. They keep talking and Abel mentions he wants to change the world and the laws to allow people with double marks to live without restrictions while punishing those who support the powerless. David remembers his childhood and how his father cared for him lovingly despite having no powers. He decides they can't be friends, angering Abel, who sends his puppets to face him. Meanwhile, Love, the pink-haired girl, arrives and watches the fight. David easily defeats the puppets and tells Abel he's a nobody. Then David asks about Lemon, and Abel reveals he captured her and is extracting her energy somewhere secret. Abel promises to tell David where Lemon is if he defeats him. David defeats Abel and reveals he only had a cream puff in his jacket. Abel decides to use his most powerful technique, summoning a monster that turns people into dolls. However, David manages to cut the strings before being touched. Abel realizes David doesn't seem to be human. After an epic showdown, Abel reveals his motivation. He wants to eliminate the weak and change the world to favor the strong due to a traumatic experience with his mother's death. David disagrees with his twisted worldview. Finally, David defeats Abel and convinces him to release Lemon and other captured students. Everyone celebrates his victory, but the divine visionary warns they will face dangerous new challenges ahead.